Hey, data fans, Reed here. Now, those of you who followed my channel for a few years might have remembered a couple of the date selection videos that I did a few years ago where I used a, a custom table and a little bit of DAX magic inside of the table design itself. Now, I have another scenario, again, coming from a client request where essentially they wanted to be able to select from a fixed 12 period selection of months. In this case, being able to go from rolling 12 prior year and current year. And the end result being is that when they select a slicer in this case, the rolling 12 will show a completed 12 month period. Prior year, of course, will show a completed period. But when you select 2025, it will actually show through the end of the year. Now, there are a few considerations with this and some problems using out of the box features. So I ended up using a connected table with a similar process of a bit of a DAX pattern and a many to many relationship. So I'll show you both the problem and the solution. So let's go ahead and hop into Power BI and get started. So I will iterate through what I built out to get to the result that I needed for the client scenario. So again, the initial request was to have a slicer that could be trailing 12 prior year or current year. Now I did start by creating a calculation group to do this. And it does give the data that I want, but with some problems still. So in this case, trailing 12 prior year shows the right data in current year. But then the problem is if you are in a current year with only partial data, the columns become much bigger. And if you had just a single section on the, on the x-axis that showed this, you end up with a really wide single column in there. And ideally, I'd like something closer to this here where you always show a full 12 periods on the axis regardless of if there is data in there. So this looks a lot cleaner. So that was the starting of the problem that I encountered. Now, my first thought is, okay, maybe I can come to this and we have the show items with no data. So let's try that. So better, but still not perfect. Now the problem though is, if I don't have anything that's uh, filtered onto the page at all, I actually get my entire calendar month and year visible on the axis. Now I could do something where I could use year offsets or something else to try to filter it to the current or prior year. But again, it's now too wide. I'm getting current year data, but I'm getting both current and prior year month and year periods. So these now just show over 24 periods rather than just 12 at a time. So that's kind of an additional problem that I have. So my solution was to figure out was actually to use a connected table with a many to many relationship with custom periods like I've done in some of my previous videos. So the final result we have here is showing 12 periods at a time. So current year, 12 periods with some data filled in, a full prior year, and there's that trailing 12 shown into here. So the end result that we now wanted. Now let's actually take a look at the formulas for the table here. So it follows a similar pattern to again, some of the prior videos that I've done where I basically union together three tables with each a custom label for it. So this one is a trailing 12. So I basically created a table with 12 rows that start from the current month going back to 11. So 12 total with a label of trailing 12 sorted number one, just to be left to right in that slicer order that we have here. So let me actually show the table while I show the measure just so we can see this a little bit better. So here's the table itself. So we have on the table here, one row for each month with the labels for trailing 12 and one for 2024 and one for 2025. Now, another benefit of this versus a calculation group is the fact that with a calc group, you can't really do dynamic uh, labels for them. So you would have to use PY and CY for that. But with a table like this, as long as you're defaulting to a selection like trailing 12 as the default slicer option, then you can actually have names that instead can be anchored to whatever that actual year is. So in this case, it's 2024 and 2025, but next year that will become 25 and 26, so on and so forth. Sadly, you can't default the selection to them. Better said is it's not gonna dynamically change year over year as you march forward in time, but you can at least have it on the actual label itself, which is really nice. So kind of an extra added benefit to that. And then all I'm doing in the model is simply connecting that between the two month and year columns from my calendar table to the windows and having it many to many, but single directional in terms of that cross filter. So overall, it creates an experience that always gives me a permanently uh, fixed number 
of sections for the x-axis, 12 total, regardless of if I'm doing trailing 12, 2024, or 2025, which gives that nice added effect at the end of it. Now, if you are curious where these um, values are at the bottom, that's simply just using the tile slicer that's found in here. Not in the scope of this, but it's a slicer that I really like to have if I want to create buttons because you get the button effects and you can also add additional labels just to quickly show you that that is an option in here. So that's under callout values. And the default is what the actual text value is, but you can go into the label section and add a measure in there um, to add any additional metrics if you'd like to. But the primary thing that I just wanted to show you, again, is starting from the scenario of the problem that I was trying to address, the client scenario, and the nice end result of a fixed number of periods showing on the axis, regardless of the data being there, and not showing any periods that it shouldn't have. But the one exception being is I would recommend defaulting to trailing 12. That way you always get that nice running window that goes with it, and then they can change to prior or current year whenever they need to with that. But otherwise, if you have any comments or suggestions, drop that in the notes down below in the comment section. Otherwise, check out some of my related content here in the upper left. Uh, and as always, uh, liking, commenting, and subscribing will continue to help this channel grow organically. And I will see you all in my next video.